First News with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Peter Blake is the superintendent of schools at Rome. They're preparing for a school year and preparing to start in person with no state guidance. Uh, We found that out last week. Peter Blake, good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? Good. Uh, So were you surprised to hear that after being told, everybody was being told that the guidance is coming, it's coming, and, and then all of a sudden, no, it's not? Yeah, well, I, I think the surprising part was that absolutely no guidance was coming. Uh, I wasn't too surprised that it was late, that there was kind of a shift. We've been we've been adjusting to that all the way through, but yeah. it is a little shocking that absolutely zero information is going to be shared. So, really, what is uh, what? And, I, and I'm assuming there will be a BOCES, uh, uh, some guidance from BOCES, a meeting uh, that I would assume that you guys will all be kind of on the same page. But for the most part, I think. Schools are doing, each individual school is doing their own thing. Yeah, we have a meeting this afternoon scheduled with the Madison or Boces. There's nine districts locally uh, in that group. Uh, Camden and Rome are two of the Oneida yeah. districts that are, are kind of carved out of the, the rest of the group in Oneida County. But we're meeting this afternoon. It does seem like quite a bit of the districts are kind of, it's going to kind of go with whatever your community can withhold or, or, or wants to which direction they want to go. Uh, and I'm also sure that the county executive will hold a meeting with all the superintendents just to kind of have a conversation as to where they stand at yeah, their level. Yeah from the, the health department here in Oneida County. Yeah. Uh, have we managed, have we found a way to, I guess we have, we've learned, we learned a lot last year um, on how to manage our way through this, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the, the biggest question right now uh, that, that really is we're all facing is masks or no masks. Right. right. Uh, is really what it boils down to. I, I'd be surprised if most, if any districts are going to go to physical distancing. I, I think that's kind of out of our plans for right now. Uh, and we're pretty much just down to the question of are we going to have people wear masks while they're in the schools or not. Have you, uh, and that, had- by the way, is being recommended by the CDC uh at the very least and uh, maybe even these indoor with the, with the with the new variant there there seem to be more indoor recommendations coming uh, from the state and federal government Correct. Yeah. And, and so the bigger problem for us in New York is, as you know, last year, uh, the state government and the state health department were very active in terms of telling us what we had to follow and not follow. Uh, and and we had the CDC on top of that and state out on top of that. And now it looks like we're going to have the CDC recommendations, uh, which we've had all the way along, but pretty much uh, we're being left to our own devices to interpret them um, right, based right. on what our basically our community is most interested in, in exploring. Going back to a point Bill made last week when, when this was announced where Zucker said, well, you're kind of on your own, Have has this now hindered your plans because you were waiting for state guidance and, and really leaves you in an, an unprepared state? Um, I, I don't know if I'd say unprepared. I would say a little bit caught off guard in the sense that it opens the door for many more uh possibilities than we originally planned for. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of districts were planning on at least getting some direction so that when we have to explain things to our communities, uh, we'd be able to do that. So I think we're delayed about a week, uh, whereas if the state had come out with some pretty concrete guidelines, we were prepared to you know, then send that down the road and let the community know what was going to happen. Now we're kind of sent in this spiral of we need to kind of get our ducks in a row as to what we're going to do with each little locality and make sure that we're somewhat on the same page regionally uh, as to not cause, you know, problems between districts. Well, I was just going to say, you were, schools were given a little bit of cover from the state last year. So, because there is an element of, uh, there's a a group out there that's uh, anti-mask and anti-social distancing and whatever it is that you decide, there's going to be somebody that's going to be against it. It may very well be, there could be a group out there feeling there should be more um, uh, protections Uh, put forth by the schools but you won't be able to utilize you won't be able to say listen we're just following state state guidance here and that kind of um i don't know i think the governor has enough problem activity going on right now he just doesn't want any more negativity yeah, I, I probably you're probably correct on that. You know, I've gotten emails all weekend from both sides of the equation here. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we're 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 used to working in an environment where we can't please everybody, uh, but this has kind of taken it to a new level where it's uh, you know there's there's strong emotions on both sides, and the the bigger issue is 
there, there is certainly no way to please everybody, but without separating your school into a complete remote learning environment and a complete in-person learning environment, um, it's going to be almost impossible to uh, do anything that, that makes everybody happy. So really, yeah. it's going to boil down to what is it that we think is the most effective way to provide education, and uh, we're going to work it from there. Ultimately, I do think this is uh, better handled by either local communities or the local districts themselves. Um, I will say, to be fair, New, New Hartford kind of had a quite a debacle last school year going back and forth. Between, yeah, it was, right? uh, it was like every two weeks the plan the, changed. The, the plan was changing, yeah. So, but but ultimately, and then, I think, and then all of a sudden, the superintendent superintendent changed. It's like, <laughs> wow. Some, uh, you don't have to get in on this one, Peter. Uh, stay quiet. Uh, but the but the reality is, though, that I think you weren't looking for mandates as much as you were looking for guidance, something to base your plan going forward on. Yeah, right. That would have been extremely helpful, one way or another, because right, when right, there's right. When there's no real guidance or, or direction, it, it makes it even more challenging to explain to the community uh, why you have to go in a certain direction. And, and they're not going to have all the details uh, when it comes to the decision-making process. I, I also have to say that uh, I was listening to somebody over the weekend uh, talking about how teachers don't want teachers don't teachers want it virtual. They don't want to. Uh, they don't want to go back into the classroom. Although every school was back for the most part by springtime last year. And I got to tell you, as my wife uh, being a, a teacher, I would think the majority of it was really hard to do it both ways. And I, I feel like the majority of teachers uh, feel like they shine when their students are in their classroom, when they're in the classroom. It's actually not as difficult. It was quite a maneuver to pull off over the course of the last year. Yeah, it was very challenging. I'll tell you, our teachers want to be in the classrooms. They want the kids in the buildings. Uh, remote learning is really not something on the table for us right now. Uh, we're, we're we're just making sure that we've got the, our ducks in a row in this one, but it looks like we're going to be one of those districts that uh, if your child has an underlying health condition and has a medical excuse that we can provide you with pure remote learning, but otherwise our kids are going to be expected to come to the buildings uh, and learn in person. It is by far the most effective way to do yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and, and the whole split teaching thing, you know, teachers trying to do both at the same time, it's, it's not good for, for anybody. It was a good stopgap. Yep. For for last year, and I think by the end of the year, uh, as good as teachers got at it, uh, people realized it was not the way uh, of the future. Yeah. So uh, what is the way of the future? I remember, interestingly, the governor was playing a big role in education uh, a year ago. And one of the things he said during his uh, daily press briefing was some of the things that we are implementing right now are going to stay. We're, we're learning things that can be done that actually make learning better uh, are there is there anything that comes to mind for you that um that that is something that's going to stick around that that we discovered is a is a great tool well one thing i and this is not totally kid centered right now but the ability to utilize online platforms for professional development for your staff mm. uh that's tremendous uh teachers can get much more professional development keep up on the times uh have meetings virtually uh you can do a lot more with a lot less time on the adult side if you think more running your school district like a business if you will yeah, uh, yeah. on the student side i do think there still is a place for full time remote learning uh uh, however, where we are with that right now is uh, currently with the expiration of the state of emergency and state ed has not re-upped their uh, temporary regulations that allow for it. Mm. Uh, there is no real uh, permanent way within the state of regulations to do full-time remote learning. But I, I don't think that's a uh, dead topic. I think you'll see that kind of be explored and developed more. And I don't know, you know, when that's going to be a full-time option, but there is value to that for some yeah. of the students for sure. Well, and uh, for some that, uh, that, that, that social experience is actually a hindrance uh, to that is uncomfortable for those students. Very interesting uh, thing that I think we learned from, from the last year. The other part is uh, say you want to, uh, you want to bring an astronaut to the school. Uh, that's a major undertaking. To, uh, you got to spend a lot of money on that to bring them in facilitate everything the online aspect um, i would assume is opening doors for anyone to be a guest speaker in a classroom anyone anywhere in the world yeah it, it's really been fantastic yeah 
That's one of the, I think, the upsides by far. Right. Yeah, right. that's yeah. a great, yeah. great thing. All right, uh, Peter, thank you so much for your time. Good luck going forward. It sounds like you guys uh, are, you know, you'd like a little guidance, but you're well prepared to move forward. We'll all make it work. I have no doubt about that. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, gentlemen. Be well. You do the same.